Welcome back guys, thanks for checking out another video. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying all the content I've been posting up. It's spring right now and uh, I am absolutely swamped with dino tunes. And I've been doing my best to try to capture a whole bunch of dino sessions for you guys so I can turn, edit them and turn them into videos and share as much information about what different parts make and um, what these setups should make. And I've been reading in the comments you guys want me to go a little bit deeper into detail. So today I'm taking the opportunity to uh, go a bit deeper into this video and share a bit more about what I put into the settings of the tune. Hopefully this video turns out, I've done my best to try to capture uh, a bunch of the specifics of the settings of the tune and different pulls and different ways of capturing this video inside and outside of the car. That being said, why don't I introduce the car and we'll get started. This is a 2006 Honda Civic Si, 8th gen Civic Si. It does have the updated front end, which is a really nice addition. Um, the owner has done Brembo's and a uh, nice clean car, nice for Canada at least. Our, most of our cars are so rusty and this one is in great shape. Um, this setup is what I consider basic bolt-ons. The mods on this car are the best bang for the buck. It has a cold air intake, a header and exhaust, that's it. It has a hybrid racing cold air intake, stock throttle body, the stock RBC intake manifold that comes with this engine, stock injectors, it has the best header I think that you can buy, it has the Skunk 2 Alpha header, and it has a three inch exhaust system. Pretty simple setup, pretty much the go-to that everyone does on these cars. Today I put down some great numbers. This engine is super healthy. It made 230 wheel horsepower, 165 foot-pounds torque. Why don't I cut to some shots of the dyno poles? I'm gonna to cut to the shots of the details of the tune, and then I'll share the dyno graph at the end. So, like I said, I'm gonna walk you through the details of what this specific tune looks like. You can definitely use these settings as a guide, but all these settings worked great for this car, but don't expect them to work exactly the same on your car. This map is my base map. It's based off of the Honda Flash Pro completely stock tuned file, but I've made significant changes to it. I'm just gonna click through the calibration settings and give you an idea of what I've done to it. Um, for fuel, this is pretty standard stuff, stock injectors, like I think I mentioned, ignition side of things. 
I'll let you in on a little secret. Set all of this to negative 100. It helps a lot with drivability. It, it really smooths out drivability uh, with throttle tipman. So I always set that to negative 100. VTEC. On this car, uh, lower engagement is 45, upper engagement is 55, so that the customer can cruise up to 5,500 RPM without having to be in VTEC. Uh, the threshold for the pressure window, I usually use about 0 0.850, um, but it could be different based on the type of cams and different aspects. This is a completely stock K20Z3, so this setting usually works really well for me. Closed loop, this is a big secret as well. I usually try to give it a reasonably narrow window, minus 20 and plus 25 for the short term. I always zero out long-term trims. Long-term trim is the devil. It, uh, it will mess up your tune. Just disable it basically by zeroing it out. And just doing that will make a big difference on your tune. Um, and then also the wide open, th oh, one thing I forgot to mention. I am tuning in speed density. I'm not using the uh, mass airflow sensor. We are using speed density. So that makes a big difference when it comes to closed loop because we are using map to determine wide open throttle. And then I usually use these settings to determine the, the wide open throttle point for switching off closed loop. Um, red line 8,500. The rest is all pretty much standard stuff. I don't mess with it too much. And in all fairness, if I try to get too deep into this, it's just gonna confuse a lot of people and probably cause more trouble than good. If you are trying to do this yourself, those are some important tips uh, or settings that will go a long way in helping to make sure that your tune works out well. Uh, why don't I sh bring up the tables? So this is the fuel map for this specific setup. Fuel maps are where you're gonna spend most of your time um, this fuel map is specific to this car and the mods that it has don't like your fuel maps It might look similar, but not exactly the same. So that's the this is the non VTEC fuel map This is the VTEC fuel map uh, VTC map. This is the this is the non VTEC VTC map for this specific setup. This worked really well on this car uh, Here's the VTEC VTC map for this setup and uh, again worked really well um, ignition timing. I know a lot of people ask about ignition timing, so I'll share my map with you guys. So this is the non VTEC ignition timing map for this specific car. And here is the uh, VTEC ignition timing map for this specific car. Um, nothing crazy, it's not super aggressive, and it made some really great power, and I didn't have to go crazy with ignition timing. I see so many cars show up with like ridiculous ignition timing settings with on pump gas tunes, and you really don't need to go crazy. Um, so hopefully you guys have found this information helpful. Uh, there's a lot of good tips and tricks and things you can dissect from this information if you're trying to tune the car yourself. But um, it's, it's difficult. Like I've been doing this for like 20 years. There's a lot of little intricacies with tuning. It's not something that I can just teach in a video. I, do, I don't mind sharing a bit of information here and there. And, and hopefully it helps you guys if, if you're eager enough to try to take something like this on yourself. These tips and tricks should really help with your own project and your own tune. So hopefully you find this helpful. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump out of the car and we'll finish up this video. All right, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the dyno pulls and found the information I recorded during that session useful. One thing I want to say is I I'm always leery of sharing too much information on the internet because I don't like to get dragged into meaningless debates on the internet. I am happy to share information and if you think I'm wrong, that's fine, it's your opinion. I try to share as much as I can without trying to get dragged in or bogged down with uh, arguments and stuff that just go nowhere. I really do hope that you guys find all the details I've shared useful. But that being said, those settings and that information and all the details of this tune are specific to this car. They won't work exactly the same on your setup. If you are trying to tune it yourself, they will make for some good settings to get you started, but don't assume that those set exact settings are gonna work perfectly on your car. So all that out of the way, why don't I share the dyno graphs uh, from today's tune? So up on the screen, I have, uh, what did I put here? Four of the last pulls, four back to back to back pulls, uh, just to show consistency of this tune. Today we made 230, 231, 230, 230, basically all within one horsepower of each other, 166 torque, and each of the four pulls all back to back within like basically a minute of each other, like basically exactly the same. Super consistent results, 230 wheel horsepower, 160 foot pounds torque out of this stock K20 Z3 engine, best bang for the buck bolt-ons, uh, great results. 230 wheel horse is a great number. 
I always like to show comparisons. And I've been doing a lot of K24 with K20 heads. And I figured I might as well bring up one of those dynographs to give you a bit of comparison as to what one of those Frankenstein K20, K24 dynographs look like in comparison to this stock 8th gen dynograph. All right, guys, up on the screen is another 8th gen I recently did. It had a K24 bottom end, a JDM K24 bottom end, completely stock. It did have the RSX Type S oil pump. It did have the 8th gen Civic SI K20 Z3 head with a stock cam swapped on top of the K24. And you can actually see how similar it is. The dynographs are very close. They both had cold air intakes. They both had good headers. They both had three inch exhausts. They both had the same head. The big difference is there's just the K24 bottom end. You see, you see a significant increase in torque with the K24 bottom end, but the same basic characteristics of the, uh, the overall power band, except maybe in the upper RPM range where the, the stock eight gen cams start to run out of breath a bit earlier than they would in the two liter configuration. But uh, nonetheless, both great setups. I tell everyone, if you have an 8th gen and you want to get more power out of it, swap in a K24 bottom end, and these are the kind of results you can expect. So anyways, that's about it for this video, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed all the extra information and details. I've done my best, but uh, it's hard to try to capture everything in the moment. Uh, I am trying to do a job of tuning it for the customer, and the customer didn't mind me taking a bit of extra time to go a bit more in detail on this tune and to make this video for you guys. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. As always, if you like the video, do me a favor, hit that like button. If you haven't already, consider subscribing and I will continue to keep making these videos and I'll continue to keep trying to improve them for you guys. So thanks again and I will see you again soon. Bye now.